Hello, and welcome to Heartful Insight Sanctuary. Let's start with a deep breath in and exhale together to start today's episode about trauma. So today we hear the word trauma almost everywhere, but what is it really? I want to explain it to you in the simplest way, not as a label, not as a trend, but as something your brain and body went through and that can be understood and healed. Because once you truly understand what trauma is, you stop seeing it as something wrong with you and you start seeing it as something that happened inside you. So let's start with something very simple. We'll start by defining what a memory is and how uh, is the process that makes it a memory in our brains. So a memory is something that happened in the past and that your brain has processed as past. You can remember it, talk about it, and it definitely definitely feels like it's something from the past whether it was something that hurt you or a joyful memory or a painful one but you recognize it as a past but before something becomes a memory your brain has to process it through two main sides the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere the right hemisphere is like the emotional artist it feels everything the sensations, the tone, the energy, the emotional color of an experience. The left hemisphere is like the storyteller. It gives the experience structure, words and meaning, and also a context. So it helps you say, this happened yesterday, Uh, I was with my family, it was at 2 p.m., we did this and that. So it gives you structure and a context to the event. The thing is, only when both sides work together can an experience be fully processed and stored as a memory. For example, imagine you went to the beach with your family. You felt the, you felt the warmth of the sun, the smell of the ocean, the laughter, the calm. Your right brain felt it. Then your left brain made sense out of it. It was such a peaceful day, the 2nd of October at 2 p.m. with my mom and dad, our cousins joined. It gives it structure and a context. So you remember it as something that happened and that's something that is complete. That's a healthy memory. Now, here's where trauma comes in. (laughs) You might be wondering, why am I talking so much about memory? Because the only difference between a memory and a trauma has been processed through the two main sides and the trauma has not. When something too overwhelming happens, emotionally or physically, your brain can't handle it all at once. The emotional load becomes too intense and the right hemisphere, the ones that feels, goes into overload. It's like trying to download a file and it just cannot be processed. So it's stuck in there because it's too large. So the system freezes before finishing the process. So instead of becoming a memory, the experience gets stuck, frozen in the nervous system, waiting to be completed. That is a trauma. And that's why years later, something small can trigger a big emotional reaction. Someone says something, looks at you in a certain way, and suddenly your body trembles, your heart races, your stomach tightens. It's not the present moment you're reacting to. It's the unfinished emotion your brain never got to process before. I repeat it. It's the unfinished emotion your brain never got to process before. Because for your nervous system, It's still happening. So you're revisiting the same feeling again that has not been processed properly. So have you ever felt like something small happened, but your reaction felt too much? You felt like you were too emotional, too sensitive, felt like you're really overreacting, even though it made perfect sense in your mind that it doesn't deserve that much? Or maybe, and that's something we don't talk about it enough, Maybe the opposite, a situation that clearly hurt you, 
but you couldn't feel anything. Only explain it logically. If yes, share it in the comments below because that's one of the ways trauma quietly shows up. And in the next episode, we'll explore how to gently help the brain complete that process so we can finally become a memory. You've probably noticed this in yourself or maybe in others as well. When someone overreacts to something small or acts almost like a child in an argument, for example, it's not really immaturity. It's the part of them that got stuck in that moment years ago. You're seeing the 8 years old or the 12 years old who didn't have the tools to process that emotion back then. So when someone acts childish, what you're seeing is a piece of their history, not really their age. And that's why the emotional age isn't always the age of the person. The person can be 50 or, or, or 40 or whatever, or even 70 sometimes and can act like a child because this is where this emotion was stuck and finished, raw and lived and unprocessed emotionally. And maybe the same is for you. In those moments, you react more strongly than you'd like. That's your younger self asking for completion, not attention. So I'll give you a simple practice as I, I usually do in my episodes. I want you to take a moment today and ask yourself, when I felt triggered yesterday or recently, how old did I feel in that moment? Whatever comes to your mind without judgment, write it. You might be surprised by the age that shows up. That's a part of you that still needs safety, understanding and closure, not correction. Thank you for being here and for listening with your heart. In our next episode, we'll go deeper into how you can begin to safely process what got stuck so you can turn what once felt heavy into something integrated and whole again. Have a good evening or a good night and see you in the next episode. Goodbye.